Assuming the compensation scheme for Horizon goes through in the next week or so, uh, nobody in the House of Commons is going to come out of this looking wonderful. Sir Ed Davey, for example, the leader of the Liberal Democrats, has already faced harsh criticism uh, for his role in failing to deal with the Horizon uh, scandal. But uh, there are there are people all the way through the Commons, and despite Pretty Patel's rather grand statement the other day, uh, I think in the Sun that. Uh, uh, that it was uh, that it was a Labour problem and a Lib Dem problem. No, it's a Conservative problem as well. Seventeen ministers have been responsible for the post uh, for the postal service uh, since the Horizon system was rolled out in the post office um, under Labour in 2000, and it was only following the 2019 Court of Appeal case that the post office's leadership was forced to recognised that there were systemic issues in the Horizon system. But uh, we knew that anyway because of a report in 2003. But 2019 is still some time ago, isn't it? That's the point at which Boris got back into Parliament with this 80-seat majority, and he did bugger all to help people in the uh, Horizon crisis. And yet people knew, and yet the ministers knew, and they did nothing, nothing, nothing until the ITV drama. So even though there was an expose on Radio 4, even though the private eye uh, was detailing the problem week after week after week, laboriously, doggedly, uh, these um, uh, the, these string of 17 ministers did nothing. Several sitting MPs did try to to help. James Arbuthnot is perhaps the uh, the one who's particularly uh, of note. Um, but you, you know, um, Harriet Harman uh, in 1998. Uh, Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, wrote to the Prime Minister, to T Tony Blair at the time, saying there was a serious risk that the Horizon Project would fail either to deliver its objectives or to do so within a worthwhile time scale. She said it's prudent to take stock before committing to further investment. And Alistair Darling uh, commissioned an interdepartmental working group known as the Horizon Project Review Group to address some of the problems of the programme. So what about that? What happened to that? Uh, Blair received a Treasury briefing in 1999 outlining a, outlining a system of failures relating to Horizon. But still, ministers failed to do anything. So it isn't that they didn't know. It isn't that they didn't know, and there's evidence that people knew there was something wrong. And uh, Stephen Timms, the Labour Minister for Postal Affairs between 2002 and 2004, dismissed concerns um, when a campaigner raised the issue about the Horizon system, saying the issue was a matter for the post office, not the government. Well, the government owns all the shares in the post office, so that is fake. That is wrong. Tim said um, uh, that the post office found no evidence to suggest that there was any fault with the Horizon system and maintained that the decision to terminate Mr Bates' contract was legitimate. So the point is they just didn't do the work. And it's um, a Pat McFadden more interested in post office closures than in the Horizon scandal well that that's also true but it just simply tells us that the post office is a failing institution in its present form it needs to be closed down and replaced by a post office which works in other words post offices the post office limited needs to close and small villages small towns all need to have their post office and small towns need to have their banks it's no good having a uh, having a, 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 a sort of illusory post office, which is barely ever open. It's no good having an illusory bank. Every so often, um, I, I, I had a dispute with my with my bank, and the bank sent me a check. So I think, oh gosh, that's nice. I got a check from the bank, 
But how do I put the cheque into a bank account? Because there's no bank in my town. So the cheque sits on the sideboard for weeks, months, because I don't go anywhere where, 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 where my bank exists. Why would I? Cheques have become a thing of the past because the banks have become, the high street bank has become a thing of the past like the High Street Post Office has become a thing of the past. And we need to turn this round. And if that means closing down the version of the post office which we've got, then we need to do that. Um, and Ed Davies' relationship, not only with the post office as a minister, but then with Herbert Smith Freehills, the law firm that advised the post office uh, during the 2019 Court of Appeal case, um, and acted for it to defy the calls for compensation and to uh, prevent proper information getting out, I, I think it's, I think his, it's his cosy relationship with the wrong side which makes him the wrong person to be leading um, one of the major parties in the UK. I think he should be standing down. Um... And he said to Sky News, I think, um, I, I wish I knew then what I know now that this was a conspiracy on a huge scale with the post office lying to victims, to judges, to ministers of all political parties over the decades. Why didn't he meet the victims? Why didn't he take uh, Alan Bates seriously? Alan Bates is fairly straightforward. We've all seen him now and we've seen Toby Jones playing him. And I think that's a fairly accurate portrayal. You look into somebody's eyes when you meet them and you think, is this person telling me the truth? And you can imagine, you can see immediately in Alan Bates why he was um, approved to take, take on a post office sub, uh, sub postmaster job because he looks and sounds trustworthy. So why did Ed Davey not give him the time of the day? Can he not tell? Can he not read character? In which case... He's not, um, he's not the right person to be leading his party. To be leading a political party, to actually to be an MP, you have to be able to read character. And if you can't, and this string of self-satisfied, smug individuals don't seem able to read character, it's not so difficult. It's not so difficult. This is why, incidentally... Um, I, I found it so easy uh, when I was on a, a program called The Circle to identify who was, who was lying, who was fake, who was not fake. You can do it simply by looking at what somebody writes. You don't even need to have them in the room. You know when somebody is telling a porky. And you know when someone's trustworthy. And yes, occasionally, occasionally you get... Um, you get you you get misled, but most of the time, if you're open to if if you're open to somebody, you can tell if they are worth supporting. And I have met so many people over the last few years. Um, I've met so many people who have been victimized by the system, and. Some of them have been successful, some of them have not. And they're almost interchangeable. It doesn't seem to matter whether they're successful or not successful. These people are committed to the truth. And you can see it in their eyes. And then you look at the lawyers. And you look at some of the ministers and you think, these people are only interested in control. They're not interested in the truth. Something has gone wrong in our system. Something has gone wrong. And uh, Jo Swinson, on her watch, she was told. She was told that uh, there was an independent review into the problems uh, of the Horizon system. This is after Ed Davey, and she dismissed it. She downplayed the evidence. In written statements to Parliament, 
She said, contrary to misleading media reports, the review explicitly confirms that we have so, uh, so far found no evidence of system-wide problems with the Horizon software. She said, we cannot intervene in the legal process to review or appeal past, past convictions. Well, what are you doing now, government? Um, and uh, the, the post office set up a, medi uh, a mediation scheme and an inquiry, if you remember, as part of this, um, as part of this, Mr. Bates versus the post office, uh, up to 2013, and then and then tried to prevent uh, the uh, publication of the independent review by the forensic accountancy firm Second Sight. And Swinson, at that point, she wrote to Alan Bates saying that the government could not compel the report to be published. She was not helpful. In fact, she did everything to suppress information. I don't understand why a minister should be suppressing information. A minister should be digesting information and talking to the relevant people and trying to get to the truth rather than suppressing the truth. This is a catalogue of disaster a catalogue of disaster and it's one minister after another out of those 17 who have failed it's not just a handful it's one after another and it's about systemic failure so for rishi sunak to talk about swift compensation that is almost an oxymoron in the circumstances after 20 years swift compensation Swift compensation because he's been found 